we'll continue on on our financial statements on the profit and loss statement and next we'll look at other income and what we'll do with that to keep it simple we'll just look at it as a percent of total revenue and you can see here it's about one percent we do have some exceptional years where it could be negative where it's other expense maybe a charge off or something and then other years where it can actually be quite high so it's not an easy one to predict but for this purposes I'm going to keep it simple and let's just say 1% of revenue uh, so I'll put that in here all that I'm going to do in that case is take the uh, revenue times the 1% divided by 100 or the 1 divided by 100 and that's going to get me to earnings before interest and in taxes or EBIT now the next thing we're going to do is try to figure out what our interest expense is well how do we do that first thing we have to do is we have to add up what was our amount of debt in the balance sheet so if I look at debt on the liability side of the balance sheet here what we can see is that overdrafts is one form of debt and long-term borrowing is another form of debt we add these two together to get our total borrowing now of course some companies will borrow let's say a company has no debt at the beginning of the year but at the end of the year it borrows ten billion dollars then what you'd find is that uh, the interest charge would only be for that last let's say they borrowed in the month of December they'd have an interest charge related to the ten billion dollars for one month but the other eleven months they'd have no charge now it's not often times that it happens like that usually a company adds a little bit or reduces a little bit of their debt but if that was the case you'd want to do a time weighted average where you'd say one divided by twelve uh, for the month of December and multiply that times the interest uh, rate and then you would do 11 divided by 12 times 0 which would be the interest rate because there wouldn't be any during that time so you would get a time weighted average but to keep things simple we just do a simple average which is just in line 94 you can see my simple average just says average of the prior year and this year and that tells us our debt outstanding then I can go back up to our profit and loss statement and look at our interest expense and I can say let's divide that interest expense which is AC11 here divided by the AC94 which is our average borrowing we multiply times minus 100 because it's a negative up here and we just want to see it as a positive down here and we can see in this case McDonald's interest costs was about 4.4% 5.1 and then 4.5 so the first thing we're going to have to do is just assume what would that be going forward well if we did more analysis on this company we may say that that's going to change over time but for right now let's keep it simple and put it there the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our total amount of debt in relation to long-term debt only right now and what we can see is that our long-term debt is this this amount five 10, 5, 6, 0, and therefore what I can do then is calculate an interest charge by using the interest rate I have here times this average debt outstanding, so I'm going to put right there, and so that's going to get me an interest rate in this case of the average you can see I've got the interest rate which is AF95 which is 4.5 divided by minus 100 because we want it to come up as a negative sign here times the AF94 which is the average borrowing rate there and or the average amount borrowed and so that will give me a certain rate and in this case that rates not much different than the prior years simply because we haven't changed much we'll come back to the overdraft later when we'll, we'll talk in more detail about that now the result of that is that can get us to our next uh, level of earnings which is earnings before taxes now then we come down and calculate the company's tax rate how do we do that we just look at the amount of taxes that it pays relative to its earnings before taxes so that would be AB 13 here or taxes divided by AB 12 which is earnings before taxes times 100 that gets us a 30 percent or 26.7 now in this case I'm gonna make sure that this is actually a negative item down here so I'm gonna copy that over and then I'm gonna basically I'm gonna assume the same interest rate or the same tax rate here and then all I'm going to do now is multiply my AF12 which is my earnings before taxes times my tax rate which is the AF96 29.8 divided by 100 we'll use a minus there to make sure it comes up as a minus 
and that gives us our tax rate which we can copy over. The basis of that then gets us down to our net income where we will stop.